Hi, welcome to How Did You Learn to Do That, where you will hear tips, guidance, and stories to help you to have a fulfilling life and career. The inspirational stories that you will hear from people will inspire you to know that you can create anything you want in your life and it just takes commitment and action. So I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited for you to hear these stories, these guidance and the tips that I'll be sharing. And if you have any questions, you could always reach out to me, info at howdidyoulearntodothat.com. And you can connect with us on social media. We're on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter at how did you learn to do that and we would love if you could help us grow and expand this podcast by reviewing us on apple podcasts as well as on youtube and sharing the episodes with your family and your friends and helping us continue to spread the message that we all are deserving of a fulfilling life and we can be the catalysts in our lives to create that all right stay tuned for the next episode Hi, everyone. I'm so excited to welcome Corey to the How Did You Learn to Do That podcast. Hey, Corey, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, Jezza. How are you today? I'm happy to be here and happy spring. Thank you. Yes, happy spring. It's not spring here. It's it's just, I guess it is if it's raining all the time. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Well, the sun is shining today in Connecticut, and I think it's supposed to be up in the 60s and 70s this week. So I'm excited. To get out for nice walks. Yeah, that's amazing. So I'll read, I'll tell you a little bit about um, Corey and read her bio for you. Um, And so Corey and I actually met through a women's empowerment circle called Sea Changers, uh, which I will tag and link also in the show notes if you're interested to check it out. Um, So Corey is not your average photographer. She is a multi passionate artist dedicating to helping. You document your love story, adventure destination elopement, brand, intimate portrait photographer, and educator. So you can find her deep in the woods, hiking or trail riding. She's always wearing a mixture of rock and roll and Southwestern vibes, probably in black, pants always, skirts barely. Her happy place is nature is her church. She was born to be an explorer, and she has embraced that title with open arms. She dreams about living the van life with her husband because nothing sounds better to her than driving cross country and stopping at every national park, hitting up wellness centers and yoga retreats, meditating in the summer sun and shooting elopements all over the map. Her friends call her a fun loving free spirit. Her battery gets charged by the sun. She's completely solar powered and feels most inspired and energized by sweet golden sunshine. A non-negotiable for her is enjoying every single moment. She's big on spiritual connection, expressing gratitude, and welcoming the universe's gifts with open arms. And she lives every day like it's her last day on this fucking planet. (laughs) She cares about a healthy planet, (laughs) living waste-free, educating others, empowering women, creating art, and last but absolutely not least, capturing intimate moments for her amazing couples. Prior to making her longtime passion for photography her full-time pursuit in 2015, she was a massage therapist for 15 years. This is where the healer in her comes from, and you'd be surprised how much photography fosters healing as well, and she is all about finding beauty in everything, but especially in you. Let her show you the light that she sees in you. And a little bit more about her, her astrology is Scorpio with a Leo rising and a Cancer moon. Her Myers-Briggs is INFP. She's an Enneagram 3, the achiever, and her love language is quality time and physical touch. And her dharma is artist and visionary. So I'm so excited to have Corey join me today on the podcast to share her story and share all about how she created this life and how she learned to that this was the path that she was destined to take and what really drew her. So I'm excited for you to share your story. Thank you, Angela. Oh my gosh, just hearing that out loud being read to me is so empowering and it just makes me smile because my copywriter, Sarah, uh, who's working with me on my website, Rebrand, just did a fabulous job basically 
putting into words what I um, couldn't do so well. So hearing it out loud just, just brings me so much joy. So thank you for being here. I am so excited. This is my first podcast ever um, being interviewed on and I put it out into the universe in 2021 that this is something that I was calling into my life. So manifesting um, experiences and moments like these and I'm so grateful for you and for the Sea Changers community because we've really helped build each other up as women uh, business owners and entrepreneurs, creators and, and conscious business women. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I uh, thank you for being on the podcast. I'm so excited to learn more about you. Um, I know that through the Sea Changers Circle, um, which is a very active community, you share a lot about yourself. And I love seeing all the different um, insights that you have and all the different things that you share are very inspirational to me. So I'd like to ask you, how did you even get started wanting to go down this path and what really drew you to this line of work um but also how do you know that this is what you're here to do um in this world uh let's see so i think it all starts with when i was a child i always go back to what brings you joy when you're a child and i for me art was always something that brought me joy. Nature always brought me joy. Being outside, climbing trees, playing in the dirt, picking flowers, um, you know, giving my parents shoulder rubs. I think that was a natural expression of who I am and like those innate capabilities, basically what your dharma is. Um, And it wasn't until recently that I read Sahara Rose's uh, book about you know, discovering your dharma. And then when I took all the quizzes and after I read the book, I was like, oh, it's not surprising to me that, you know, um, you know, being a visionary and an artist and spreading beauty in the world is part of my dharma. So halfway through my life, it's just like another confirmation of I am on the right path and the three different careers that I've had in my life so far um, have all come to me for a reason and they make me who I am today. Um, So just, you know, like I say, the art and and being close to nature and and sharing the beauty that I see in the world with other people and empowering them um, through photography and through, you know, my former massage therapy was that I always wanted to make people feel good. And whether that's through physical touch or through photography, it's like this magical healing presence. It basically, you know, it empowers people to feel better about themselves, to feel confident, to feel beautiful, to have these amazing memories captured, those moments captured in, you know, beautiful destinations and with their lover, or, you know, if I'm doing business branding uh, photography, it's like, it just all falls into place so naturally. So Mm -hmm. I know, I feel it in my bones that I'm on the right path. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Um, and I love that you said you, you read Sahara Rose because when I was just uh, getting into spirituality or really trying to understand what it was a couple of years ago, um, I was I turned to her podcast, the Your Higher Self uh, podcast, and, and I've been following her along since, and it's just incredible the the you know the content that she shares and the quizzes because you really get to learn about yourself and like you said your dharma. Um, and I'll have to, I'll have to actually get the book that you're talking about too, so that I can, I can read about it because I would like to know what my Dharma is deeply, um, and know it more. And yeah. And I think that what you're saying about, um, it being a confirmation of the path that you're on and it actually confirming that for you, that you are here to be a visionary and to be an artist and to make people feel good. Um, I I love that. And I love that in your bio too, taking all the different areas 
that you're passionate about and all the different work that you're doing and how it all centers around um, healing and making people feel good and um, and also uh, adhering to your artistic side and your visionary side and bringing it kind of all together, I think is amazing. Um, and I talk about this, I've talked about this a few times on the podcast about being a multi-potentialite and um, how sometimes in society we're told that there's only one thing you can do and you have to stick to that. Otherwise, you're seen as not focused or you're seen as doing too many things and not really pouring your energy into one thing. Um, but I'm a huge believer that there's so many things that we're called to do and they're all centered around one core belief and one core aspect of who we are. Um, and it all feeds into that, you know, and uh, I think that that is awesome that you share that also in your bio and, and what you just shared. So how did you actually start um, in this journey so when you became a massage therapist, which um, I don't know, was that your first journey or foray into the healing space um, and into this space that made you feel that you wanted to make other people feel well? Um, and how did you actually know that that's what you wanted to do? What uh, drew you to that? Yes. So I started my career um, unwillingly um, because I knew when I was in high school, I did not enjoy school. I only wanted to take art courses. Uh, I knew when I was going to high school that I did not want to go to college. Um, the only thing that interested me was art. Um, so I, I knew if I did go to school, it would be for art. So when I got out of high school, I went to school at night and took art history classes. I took drawing classes. So not to get a degree, but just to to, to take courses that brought me joy. Um, and I started uh, with, you know, I learned secretarial skills in high school on an old fashioned typewriter. Um, this is really gonna date me. <laughs> um, this was before computers. Um, uh, let's just put it this way. I graduated high school in the eighties. Um, so I took my skills that I acquired through high school and I pursued a job at um, some corporations. I worked for a major corporation insurance company in the United States um, for 14 years and I did it well and I took my job seriously. I was very responsible. My parents taught me that hard work is the way to success. Um, do good, be good person, you know, earn a living, support yourself. So my parents taught me really good, solid foundation skills on how to be a responsible adult and how to take care of myself. Um, and when I was younger, like my whole paycheck would go to my wardrobe, my car and my apartment. That's just how I was. Uh, those were my priorities back then. Um, but I quickly found that my personality, and I knew this from the beginning, was that I didn't fit into the corporate world. That's not who Corey was. I am uh, a free spirit. I don't like to be tamed. I'm a wild woman. Um, I have a hard time sitting for eight hours in a chair. Um, I don't like to be monitored. Um, so an eight to five job, I don't know how I survived for 14 years, but I did because I knew I had to pay the bills. So while I was working in the corporate world, I discovered massage therapy by receiving a massage. And it was so, it had such a profound effect on my life. I was like, oh my God, I love this. It's like, it feels so good. And I remembered that I used to give my parents, you know, shoulder rubs and that it always made me feel good because they said it made them feel good. So I decided to go to school at night. Uh, I dropped my courses in college to pursue massage therapy. And I took courses for 20 months, uh, three, four nights a week. I worked full time. I knew when I started massage therapy that I would have my own business. Like I knew from the get-go that I'm going to get out of the corporate world. I'm going to support myself and it's just going to be amazing. I had visions and because I'm a, a visionary person and an artist, like I knew that each of, I wanted a room 
for each of the seasons, for each of the elements, and that the client would pick the room that they wanted to be in. So whether that was earth, air, fire, or water, um, I would have that facility someday. So that facility never blossomed into the vision that I had, but I made my one massage therapy room the most peaceful, luxurious, like healing place, like all of my essential oils, the music, the, the warmth of the table. Uh, basically when people came to me, they were already relaxed as soon as before they even got on the table. Um, and I love that job because I, I know how good it made my clients feel. And I had regular return people. So, um, while I was doing that, um, I branched off again into photography. That was something that has always been with me since I was a child. I started with my dad's, um, Minolta film camera. And I would always take pictures of the garden, the flowers, nature, animals, horses were always my love. Um, I've always loved fashion. Um, I used to be a model in my early 20s when I got out of high school. So fashion photography to me was where I thought I would branch off into like doing uh, major editorial fashion spreads, like still my dream. I would love to be hired by like free people or Zimmerman or, <laughs> you know, any of these like top fashion designers or even a, a bridal fashion line uh, to do bridal editorials. So mm -hmm. um, that's kind of how, how I branched off. I always believed in hard work. So I worked at um, corporate for 14 years. I started my massage therapy business. I got laid off. Um, at Aetna, uh, thankfully, which gave me a six month severance package, which helped me to kind of, you know, ease into my business. But as soon as I graduated uh, massage therapy school, I then um, started my, my, my um, career in that massage therapy field. Yeah, and same thing with photography. Uh, when I branched over from massage to photography, I had already been doing photography for, I think, three years before I became a full-time wedding photographer. Yeah, wow. That's amazing. And um, and I, I love that you share that you you were starting to follow this, this path before you ended the thing that was before. And I think that sometimes uh, we have those limiting beliefs or we have those thoughts that something needs to happen before you can do something else. Um, and it can't kind of happen at the same time. And, I, and I, I'm at, at that place right now where I am working my corporate job um, and I'm starting this business and I'm hoping that I can transition that um, soon in the next couple of years. But, um, but yeah, I think that's a testament to say that you don't have to you know, stop your corporate job to start something else that you could do at the same time and then transition when you feel comfortable. Um, and, uh, and then also doing, do evolving again from your massage therapy to your photography. Um, and, and what you said about hard work and learning and be in following what you're interested in, um, I think is amazing. And, um, and I hope the free people also or, Z or Zimmer. I don't know Zimmerman actually, but <laughs> I know free people and I know that your, your style of photography would fit really well with, with what they do too. Um, so I do hope you, I'll put that out in the world. I hope you get to an editorial with them, um, in a, in our, how they hire you for, for work as well. Thank um, you. That's so sweet. Yeah. I definitely think, um, you know, I have my parents to thank for my hard work ethic and, um, you know, uh, the thinking back then was hard work will get you everywhere. But I have to say in my life, I have learned that yes, hard work did get me there, but balance is also key. And in the past five, well, 10 years, I've always strived to have a healthy lifestyle and balance. And I think that's important that we can get into later. Um, but
but it, it definitely, I was a hustler. I always have been a hustler, um, but I don't want people to burn out. And I think that's going to be my major message here is that you need to take care of yourself mm -hmm. on so many different levels. Um, it's one thing to work hard, but burning out is not the goal. And that is not to be glamorized. Like I, I want to make sure that that's really clear, um, that you can get to your goals if you have your dream and you work for it. You know, you just have to believe and keep working at it. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you share that because that is, um, earlier we were talking about that. I coach, um, early career professionals and, um, a big part of what I share, um, that you're sharing is that you need to have some tools in your toolbox that you can turn to when you are starting to feel the burnout or the exhaustion, or just not feeling yourself, feeling misaligned, um, and needing to take a break. You need to have some tools that, you know, will, will help you. That'll take care of you. And for me personally, it's journaling, um, or even talking out loud. I, I was sharing this with other podcast guests. Um, and she said, she does it too, that, Sometimes if I'm really struggling or I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'll just speak out loud as if I'm telling somebody what's going on, um, but it's just me. Um, so just getting it out of my body or getting it out onto paper um, really helps me. And and what you say about balance, I think is so key because um, you know we do see this glamorized hustle culture. Um, and, and the thing that's important to share and that you've, you've shared and alluded to is that um, it is okay to hustle. It is okay to have um, multiple things going on at the same time, but at the core of it, you need to take care of yourself as well. Um, because if you do burn out or, or, you know, something gets happens or you get sick, um, you know, it, everything will just wait for you to recover. So um, I always say that it's important that you understand your limitations, you understand what's important to you. Um, and go forward with that. And I know for myself, because I'm just coming up on a year of this new business and this new adventure um, in April, I remember, thank you. I remember when I first started, I started with um, no knowledge of the online space, no knowledge of digital marketing, no knowledge of podcasts or how that works. I just knew I wanted a podcast and I wanted to share inspirational stories of people that, you know, can inspire other people to know that, hey, if you know, it's not that it's so difficult to get it going. It's just, you need to be, um, you need to understand who you are and pursue that and actually make that happen for yourself. Um, and actually was watching a sh TV show last night and somebody said, um, it's it, when someone says that, Oh, I wish I had a different life then. And the character at the TV show said, well, you could have, um, you just had to go for it. You just had to work for it. We all could have had a different life. We just had to work for it. Um, and that really, that kind of, mm -hmm. I was thinking about what, what we're doing and all everyone that I've been meeting and um, how we're really connected to who we are and trying to go for it. Um, but as, but along that route, it, you know, you hear all these other things that people are doing. You see other people in the space that are doing certain things and you feel like, oh, maybe like I should do this. And when I started, I had no branding. Like I thought I just needed a logo <laughs> and my logo was my cover art for my <laughs> podcast. Like I, that's how much I knew. And, um, and as I got started, people started talking about, oh, you need a brand. You need a color. You need this. Yeah. Need that. So I started doing that slowly on my own with no knowledge. Um, and I started looking at some people around me and I was like, wow, they're doing so amazing. And they've got all this engagement, all this traction and whatnot. And then I had to put things into perspective and just say, you know what, you really have only like you, you started this business a year ago, but you really only um, started the brand three months ago. So there's nobody creates a brand in three months and scales it like that's very challenging. So I had to bring it back into perspective so that I didn't feel burnt out because I saw myself getting on that hamster wheel, you know? And when I started mm -hmm. my purpose or my why um, for, for having this business and going down this road is time. I just felt that I never had enough time. Um, and obviously when my daughter was born, I was like, I want to be present in her life. I don't want to be stuck at a nine to five and say, sorry, I can't come to your soccer game or I can't accompany you on that field trip or I can't and I can't, 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 um, or I can't spend quality time with you in the evenings because I'm rushing home and we're, we got things to do and it's bedtime, you know, to me, it was really important that I was, 
present with her fully. Um, but I realized that I went into this with the why of having more time, but I was actually pulling more time away from her. Um, so I had to reshift my perspective and create that balance for myself. So I appreciate what you're sharing because um, it's true that you need to create the balance that works for you, that um, really drives you forward in, in what you want to do in this world. Yes. And, and I think that's really important what you're saying about, you know, reprioritizing or, or looking at your why again and, and making your daughter your priority in that time and, you know, and, and just re reprioritizing what's important. So for me, what's really important to me is my husband and spending quality time with him as my partner. I want to grow together with him throughout our life you know, like that is my most important thing in the world is my relationship with my husband. And, you know, every day he goes on my gratitude list, you know, and, and I believe like couples that play together, stay together. So the more I nurture my relationship with my husband, I carve out that time in my work life because in the past it was a little imbalance pre COVID and, you know, in that stress seeps into your relationship and that's no fun. So, you know, we're our own bosses. We get to make the rules. We're not working for somebody else. We, you know, and because we're passionate people, I'm a passionate person. I spend my time doing what I love. I get so charged up by all the artistic ideas and, oh, I want to do this and I want to do that. And before you know it, all I'm doing is working. And then it's like, oh, hello, husband. You know, it's like, <laughs> so, and I don't, I don't want to be ignored. I want to feel important. So I make him feel important. It's, that's how it should be in, in relationship, whether that's with your, your spouse or your, your children or your friends, your family. Um, I need to get better with the friends and family, but <laughs> As long as my, my husband and partner, you know, that's, that's my most important relationship to me. So yeah, I'm glad yeah. you mentioned that. Yeah. I love that because I, I actually just was thinking this last night because I had to, I had to work a little bit later than I do normally, but I had to, I came to the realization that, you know, if I wanted to be a workaholic, I could be a workaholic because I, I really love the work that you're I'm doing now. And um, and I'm sure you feel the same way. It's just like, it's, everything is just so interesting and you want to just keep, you know, doing this work because it brings you so much, um, so much happiness and so much joy and just fulfillment and empowerment. Um, but I have to put, um, I chunk out my days, like I schedule my days. And so, um, you know, between five and seven, I do my morning routines, um, but between seven and nine or seven, seven to three, I do my day job. Um, and then three to seven, I, I have to spend that time with my daughter. That's a non-negotiable. Like I get off work. I have to spend the time until she goes to bed. Um, and then seven to eight, I do do a bit of the podcast work and it varies throughout the week, but, um, and then after eight is yeah. like you said, like I could keep working, but after eight, I want to go spend time with my husband because that's our only downtime in the day. Cause he works too. <laughs> Luckily now he works from home. So I see him more often, but, um, yeah, I could just keep I, working I all like day. How he got, I like how he got scheduled last. <laughs> well, it's, well, yeah, he did get scheduled last <laughs> because of that, but because I, it just works I'm in our day. <laughs> well, I see him, I, well, he works um, at home now too. So it's good because now I get to see him more often, but he, his day is so long. Like it's 4.30 to 3. Um, because uh, wow. he's just setting up his own business right now. So he's working a long, long days. Um, but then, yeah, we get three to seven and then we get alone time, which is nice. But um, yeah, it's, it is, it's really important to, you know, know your priorities. And I also need to get better with my family and friends. And I actually said to my cousin who I talked to on the phone recently, I was like, you know, as tragic as the pandemic has been and, you know, and as, um, horrible as it been it's changed so many people's lives I was like I really have embraced this you know breath of fresh air where I don't have these responsibilities to my family and my friends because um and I'm from BC 
in Canada and our restrictions here have been generally pretty tough uh, uh, compared to the rest of the world. And right now we're not allowed anybody out of um, inside of our homes that is not a part of our household. Um, and if we do go outside, we're only allowed to see the same 10 people that are, so if you live in a household of three people, you each get like three and a half people to see, you know, so it has to be the same 10 people per household that you see. So you can't mix groups. Um, and it's super strict. And so I was telling her, I was saying that um, I do really appreciate this time to really just reflect and focus on my business and my life and setting you know, um, certain routines for myself um, and not having to, you know, be worried about the responsibilities of seeing family and friends. And I have a huge family. Um, my dad's almost entire family lives here and they're, you know, if you add them all up, they're about 50 people or 60 people. And they were, wow, they're very, very close. So they would be like dinner parties every week at somebody's house and like, and they really enjoy spending time with one another. And I do too, but it is, it does take a bit of a, a toll on you um when you're when you're seeing this 50 people every week you know it's it is a lot so the pandemic has really yes. uh, yeah. shifted things for for our family which is which is nice because it, it gave me a little bit of a break to actually mm -hmm. focus on some other things but and so how do you actually yeah. maintain that balance yourself so how do you you know like we talked about um loving the work that you do how do you actually prioritize and maintain the balance and how do you check in with yourself when you know that you're starting to you know work a bit more than you said you wanted to uh it's so funny because you're talking pandemic and and you know and all of this stuff and and I've always been an introvert um and I get charged up by having alone time so being at home alone wasn't hard for me at all. I loved it. And me too. Uh, yeah, it wasn't hard at all. I, I know I, I do miss gathering with friends for sure. Um, my family is far away, so I don't see them that often anyways. Um, but yeah, I have a routine and last week I, my I'm in spring. And so now wedding season is starting to pick up, but because of the multi-passionate, you know, person that I am, I have different branches of my photography business. So I've been um, offering, I just did my first styled shoot for photographers last week in my studio. We all wore masks. There was only six photographers, the two models and the florist. So I put together a styled shoot in my studio. It was gorgeous. The photographers took their photos. We were together for four hours. I have not been around that many people in forever and holy smokers, the next day, the next two days, the whole week, the rest of the week, my energy level went, it went down because I'm not used to exuding that much um, energy verbally, um, energetically it was just this huge projection i was putting out you know so much creative energy to put this whole product production on which i loved and i enjoyed every single moment and i was on cloud nine when i had all these people around i was seriously like on the ceiling with my energy i had so much fun we were laughing all day it was great um and then I had the next day to kind of decompress a little, and then I had a photo shoot the following day. Um, so I know to give myself like a recharge day. So when I book weddings, I only take one couple of weekends because I know that my energy level goes down the next day. I know myself that well that I do not commit to doing two or three weddings a weekend because that's not fair to my couples that's not fair to me and, or my husband. Um, so I just, you know, I, I book according to my energetic cycle, my energetic rhythm um, and starting my days off with waking up, lighting the candles, burning the sage, picking my tarot cards, journaling, meditating, um, doing some Kundalini yoga and hopefully going out and getting some exercise, like moving my body in nature with a fresh air. 
just really helps to ground me and it energizes me. So um, those are the things that fuel me. Um, and it, it's basically like food for my soul. And if I don't do it consistently, I can tell when I haven't done it. My mood, my energy, just it starts, it starts trailing or my mind starts going in places that it shouldn't go. And I have to reel myself back in and say, Corey, did you meditate today? Corey, did you journal? No, nope, you didn't see your gratitude. Um, 10 things that you're grateful for today. Like, so that always helps reel me back in like gratitude is everything. So when we can think about all the things that we're grateful for, we're never in a lack mindset and we don't get into that comparison mindset. But when we're go, go, go and working, working, working all the time and your wick starts to burn at both ends, then you're more susceptible to getting into the comparison mode of I'm not doing enough or I'm comparing myself to somebody else. Eh, scratch that. So I know myself well enough to take care of myself, but I'm, I've also been around the sun plenty of times and I've had a very, you know, rich and experiential life to have gone through these experiences that have taught me these lessons. Yeah. Yeah. I really appreciate you sharing that because it, it reminds me of, um, the fact that, you know, when I was talking about the tools in your toolbox that you need to connect with yourself to know what really works for you. Um, and I actually um, did, you know, engage during the pandemic, which I also am an introvert and I get charged up by being alone. Uh, but during the pandemic, it was amazing that all these services that I maybe couldn't have gone to in person because of time constraints or, or whatever, they all moved into online. So I had the pleasure to try out so many things you know like a sound bath I had never heard of a sound bath and somebody sent it to me and said hey this local studio here is doing a free sound bath online and I did it and it was incredible um, and then there was um, yoga which um, before I was pregnant actually I did now that I look back on the um, history of my path and the things I would do before um, I could see that I was getting into those that burnout and that cycle and when I got pregnant, I thought, you know, what are some things I could do just to, you know, that pregnant people do? <laughs> One of them was prenatal yoga. And it was like this like buzzword, right? And so I was like, all right, let, let me try it. And um, I've talked about this before, but when I went into that first class, that it was a, a month and every month the instructor changed, it changed. But that first month instructor, when I first was introduced, she really brought the spiritual part of yoga out. Um, and she really, like you were saying, you set it, set up your massage room in a, in a way that brought calm to people. She did the same. Um, and she would kind of go around the corner of the room, spraying her eucalyptus and lavender spray. And it was incredible. Um, and mm. yeah, and she took us through this practice and it really brought me to a place that felt good. And I really felt that this brought me, allowed me to just take some time to relax and um, really understand um, what was going on with me that day and really allowed me to connect on a deeper level. But um, trying out a whole bunch of different things, I think is so helpful, um, even before you think you need to, or you know, uh, you are introduced to it, but looking around to see what, what are some self-care um, things you could do, or what are some things that you could do that you think would help you to connect with yourself, to get deeper, um, because some things work and some things don't work, but, um, but once you try a whole bunch of things then you'll really understand what, what balances you and what works for you. And, um, and I, I appreciate you sharing that you do connect back to yourself and, you know, say like, have you done this? Have you done this? And because, you know, those are the things that work for you. And, um, and I think connecting and self-reflecting with yourself like that is so powerful. Um, and I do that too mm -hmm. often um, when I'm feeling a bit of, uh, like you said, like a bit of um, comparison creeping in or a bit of the um, limiting beliefs creeping in or the fears um, kind of coming in and checking in with yourself, like what's going on. And uh, recently I felt, you know, it was super busy um, in my day job and you know recording podcasts and putting them together and the social media is a lot of work behind the scenes and then um, I had this course I was also putting together 
um, over a period of time. And so I felt I was starting to feel the stretch um, and the burnout kind of creeping in and just feeling like, what am I doing? Um, I'm really stretching myself thin and I should instead use my time to relax. Um, and I had a conversation with my husband and he said, well, do you, what do you feel like doing? And I, and I was like, I feel like something needs to give and maybe I should just shut down the podcast. Um, and then he reminded me, he said, you know, you started with the podcast because that was your passion. Um, so are the other things that you're doing, can they go and can you keep the podcast? And it really kind of, um, you know, him being my support, it really helped me sit down and reflect, okay, why am I feeling like this? What is going on? And it came down to, that I wasn't taking care of myself. And that's why I was starting to feel overwhelmed and confused and not sure what I wanted to do. And um, where I know that the podcast is, is the, the, you know, the avenue that I want to go down. It is what brings me the most purpose. Um, and, and I do love the chorus and the, and you know, what that's going to bring in connecting with people at a deeper level. Um, and, and yeah. And so when I got back to it, I was just, yeah, you're not, I'm not, I wasn't journaling. I wasn't exercising. I wasn't, um, doing my evening yoga before bed. And I also wasn't going to bed at a reasonable time. So uh, for me, I was, mm -hmm. I'm a night owl. I've always been a night owl. So oh, get, me, get me up early mm -hmm. and it's just, it's not going to happen. Um, but I would stay <laughs> up and I actually, Jay Shetty recently did an episode that I listened to and it really, I felt embarrassed because everything he was saying was so true. <laughs> But he said we call he calls the late night revenge time where we take revenge in the evenings because we've we haven't had any time for ourselves. We're always spending our time on other people throughout the day. Like we're spending our time for work, we're spending our time for connecting and responding to emails, or we're spending our time with our kids or our family or our friends, but we don't get the introspection time. So we stay up late because we're we're feeling the it's a revenge at life that I get to take this time. And he said, and then you go to bed late and then you wake up in the morning and you're not re-energized and you're kind of going through this again. And you say that, oh, tonight I'm going to go to bed early because today I'm tired. But then the revenge kicks in and it's just a cycle. And that's how I feel, <laughs> you know? That's, that's interesting. I've never heard it put like that before. That's really wild. You know, it's, it's almost like self-sabotage in a way like that we're doing something that, you know, yes, it's good to take care of yourself, but you're, it's almost like, um, uh, payback, like, ha, 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 I'm going to get yeah. you, you know, but then we're the ones that are paying the price, unfortunately. And it's funny you say you're a night owl. Cause I'm a morning bird, um, early bird. I love waking up early because that's when my mind is clear and fresh and I have the most ideas. And after two, three o'clock in the afternoon, forget about it. Don't ask me to think about anything. Like I just, that's kind of when I check out, I, I'm a communicator in the morning. That's yeah. when all my ideas come. And in the afternoon, I'm just like, okay, <laughs> I'm well, on autopilot. So. Yeah. Well, you know, I, um, I appreciate you sharing that because I feel that I'm not actually a night owl. So what I, what I did is I started looking at what I was, what was I oh. doing staying up late? And I realized I was doing mindless things. You know, I was exhausted, just scrolling, not really thinking um, productively. Um, and so then over the last year, I've been shifting that, trying to go to bed earlier so I can get up earlier. And so now um, I usually go to bed by 9.30 and I'm up by Four thirty, five o'clock and I am much more productive in the morning so I feel that that was that's a chunk of time that I didn't realize was so good for me and I actually really love getting up in the morning in the dark and then seeing the light and the life kind of come to come to life um and I would have never known Isn't that it but magical? it's so magical and I just I would have never known that if I didn't take that conscious effort to make that shift that I had this chunk of time in my day that was for me that allowed me to start my day with introspection um and really take care of myself before I start giving to other people throughout the day um but I'm sure you can attest to this that it um mm -hmm. it allows you to actually give better and show up better um a better version of yourself in the throughout your day when you take that time for yourself in the morning um and and yeah, so, but I realized when I, when you go back to connect with yourself, like, why did I feel like I was a night owl? And I realized, cause my mom's a night owl. So our cycle of our life was, was 
we would like, it was my mom, my sister and I, and my mom's a single parent. So it was like, we were all up until two, three in the morning, but we were in bed until noon. Oh, and it was just because we were following my mom's cycle, you know, and she's very much like that. She hates yeah. the mornings. She's a true night owl. Um, but I never, until my, cause my husband's an early bird. So I never thought about being an early bird until he was like, why don't you try it out and see if you like it. And now I'm like, I can't get enough of it. You know, I can't get up earlier than, you know, I want as early as I want, but, um, it's incredible. So it's, it's true that the early bird gets the worm in as a photographer. Um, I go out to places, um, you know, I'm, I'm an adventure photographer. So if I can get to a trail or a location before sunrise and start a shoot before anybody else gets there, prime time. Like the early bird gets the worm because nobody else is awake and around. So you can go to a beautiful location at sunrise. It's going to be a lot less crowded than sunset for prime time, right? Yeah. And I think starting your day with that intention and before you even turn on your phone, pick up anything, you're just focused on the kind of day that you're going to create and then shut your phone off at a certain time at night and commit to yourself. That's pretty much what I try to do. Um, so that I don't get into the comparison mode at night as I turn my phone off. It's like, nope, I don't have time for that. I need rest, you know, so I yeah. can wake up fresh tomorrow. Is your husband there? Tell him I said Oh, I. he's not here. No, no, no. My daughter crashed in though. Um, oh. <laughs> I was just checking to see if she, if she was oh, coming nice. back in, but she nice. crashed in. She was just crawling behind me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I really appreciate what you're sharing because it's, it really kind of opens the doors of connecting deeper with yourself and understanding who you are and everything that you've done in the trajectory of your life um, is all because you've connected with yourself and really understood where what's next for you and where you want to go. So um, if there's one thing you could say to young Corey before you became, um, before you got onto this path, what would you say to her? Ah, uh, gosh, the young Corey. Um, I would definitely say to, to follow your heart, uh, go with your guts, surround yourself with positive energy in people, ask for help. Uh, let's see, seek balance, find a mentor. Um, never stop learning and never lose that sense of wonder and joy. Um, and also find your community of, of people that you can trust that will support you. Avoid gossip yeah. and seek high vibe people and don't, don't compare yourself. Like yeah. those are my things. You know, I wish I, I, you know, I've never really been a gossiper, but I think we have all fallen into hearing ourselves say things that aren't conscious. They're, they're sort of subconscious. And so I really am watching my words about what I think and what I say. Um, and I'm trying to just stay on positive vibes you know, and, and that's what you attract in your life is the more mm -hmm. positive you put out, the more you, you attract it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love that. Well, thank you so much for sharing um, everything that you've shared. And I just generally end the podcast recording with a question. Um, and I have a ton of different icebreaker question boxes and decks of cards that I pull from. So today I'm going to pull from this one called the high geek game, cozy conversations and pleasant company. Um, so, so this one, I love this one. This, this one's my favorite one because the questions, they're just very introspective and you really get to know your group of friends. So um, my group of friends always laugh because I always pull these out and I'm like, let me get to know you more. And they're like, can we just play Monopoly or something? I love that. So I actually just pulled I, the card. I do the same thing with my tarot. Oh, go ahead. I, I just pulled a card for you, which was, is, you know, the perfect question. Uh, for what you do with your elopement photography and your couples. Um, so do you find love or does love find you? Mm. 
Good question. <laughs> well, when you are love, I guess you're just attracting love, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I honestly, I really believe in the attraction energy. I am, I am love and I attract love. Yeah, me too. Does that I make think, sense? Yeah, totally makes sense. And yeah. I agree. Like once you, once you love you, once you love yourself and you, then you are attracting love too. Um, and I'm actually trying to tell my mom that because my sister's getting married and moving out on her own. And so my mom will be alone. And I've been telling her, I was like, mom, you need a companion. And she's really young. Like my mom is, how old is she? She'll be 52. She's really young. And so I was like, mom, you can't, you know, be alone forever. (laughs) That's how old I am. (laughs) Yeah. And so, so, you know, you're, you're really young and she, and yeah, so I was telling her, I was like, mom, you like, you can't just like be single forever. You know, she's been single for over 25 years. And I was like, like, you you need, you need a companion, somebody to just be with somebody just to like hang out with just to support you and love you. And she's always like, Oh, I'll hang out with my grandkids. And I keep telling her, I'm like, no, your grandkids are going to have friends. They're they're going to become teenagers. They're not going to want to see you. (laughs) You know, you have to do your own thing. So so yeah, so I'm really hoping that once she she loves herself, that she can attract some love too. Um, but thank you so much yeah, for. I I was gonna. Yeah. Do you mind if I, yeah, I yeah, say one ahead. more thing about yeah. what you're saying with your mom? Um, so when you're not looking for love, and when you're living your your true purpose, and you are enjoying your life, and you're passionate about your life. And you're just going about your life doing what you love to do and you're not looking that's actually when you're going to attract somebody when you're in this seeking mode and you're putting that vibe out there that you need love then you're going to repel it like i've seen that in my life and that's how i met my husband i was doing what i love to do i wasn't looking i never thought i'd get married and here i am married (laughs) <laughs> that's amazing yeah that's an inspiration I'll have to share that with my mom because she's I guess she's in that place right now where yeah. she's not not she's not looking she's not look she's not looking for love but she's also not looking but she's going a step further and saying she doesn't want it so um like she's putting up conscious mm-hmm. up conscious wall that says no I don't want it and it's just not for me and yeah. you know she, I guess because she has this picture of what love is um that is not a good picture. Um, and I think she needs to do some shifting in her mindset and, and just, you know, not go out seeking it, but just love herself. Um, and know that there, there could be some mm-hmm. life for her beyond being a mom and a grandma and, um, you know, and just taking care of heck, herself. Heck fully. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I really appreciate yeah. well, you. Well, I hope she finds it. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I hope so too. Um, but yeah, I've loved everything that you've yeah. had to share. I feel like we need another episode just to get, you know, into there's so much, oh um, Thank you. there's so much that you're offering and there's so much that I want to talk about, but I feel like we, we'd have like a three or four hour episode. <laughs> <laughs> so I may have to have you come back and, and share another part of, oh of who you God. are in your life and this journey that you're on, which I think is so beautiful. Um, so thank you so much. And uh, for those that want, thank you. And for those that want to connect with Corey, I will link all of her, uh, websites and her social media accounts or the show notes for you to connect with her. Um, and yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the end of that episode. I hope that you have learned something from that episode that can have you getting closer to a fulfilling life and career. There's so much out there in the world that you can learn, you can experience, and you can apply to your current life that will help you start making those little steps towards a career that you love and that you're inspired by. So I'm excited for you. I can't wait to hear what you're doing. I would love for you to share with me over on our social media, or you can send me an email and let me know. You can visit our website, howdidyoulearntodothat.com for the show notes and for blog posts. 
and to hear more about what we're up to. And of course, we would love if you could help us grow by reviewing us on Apple Podcasts as well as on YouTube and sharing with your family and your friends. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye.